Hi, we're out on the range today, so please bear with gunfire here in the background. A topic of discussion that's come up a lot lately are various handgun calibers in their role as defense against lions, tigers, bears, oh my. Now the problem with that discussion is that it leaves out a lot of animals that can be truly dangerous to humans. For example, here in the United States, a lot of people are severely injured by vicious dogs. This discussion also leaves out the fact that disease can be spread by mosquitoes. I've seen people become very ill as a result of tick bites, and there are people who have life-threatening anaphylactic reactions to bee stings. Of course, I have to concede that the discussion of what's better to defend yourself against a cougar or a bear, a 357 Magnum or a 10 millimeter, is a far more interesting discussion than what's the best type of insect repellent. So with that in mind, today I want to specifically talk about caliber 45 ACP in its role as defense against cougars or bears, and two questions that come up a lot. One being, is 45 ACP sufficient for that task? And two, if it is, what are some good ammunition choices? Well, I have my Colt government model, caliber 45 ACP, and I have various types of 45 ammo, so let's shoot a few shots and see if we can shed any light on that. Now we'll start with the mundane task of some chronograph testing, and I'm going to start with Winchester White Box 45 ACP 230 grain full metal jacket round nose. And I've got the chronograph set up at 7 yards. And side note, some people ask how I'm reading the chronograph. It's only 7 yards away, and the numbers are about an inch tall. It's easier to see than you might think. Eight hundred and eighty-three. Eight hundred and forty-two. Eight hundred and forty-seven. Eight hundred and twenty-eight. Eight hundred and fifty-six. Now let's try a different type of 45 ammo. Now we'll try Federal American Eagle 45 ACP 230 grain full metal jacket round nose. 841. 830. 858. 822. 835. Now let's try one more type of full metal jacket ammo. Now we'll try Remington UMC 45 ACP 230 grain full metal jacket round nose. 798 801 784 798 and 787 now let's go crunch the numbers. Well, I crunch the numbers and it comes with the caveats that chronographs don't always agree with each other and certain environmental factors like elevation and ambient temperature can affect chronograph results. But what the results really show us is that not all 45 ammo is created equal. The Winchester White Box gave us a mean velocity of 851 feet per second. Now the Federal American Eagle gave us 837. Well, that's only 14 feet per second less, and that's within the variation of one round to the next, so I don't consider that significant. But the UMC ammunition got a mean velocity of 793 feet per second. That's 58 feet per second less than the Winchester, and I do consider that significant. However, more is not always better. With the Winchester ammunition, the variation between the slowest round and the fastest round was 54 feet per second. With the Federal, it was 36. With the Remington, it was only 17. That's a lot more consistent, and that greater consistency for some people in some guns turns into greater accuracy. Also, I don't know if you could see it, but I could feel significantly less recoil with this ammunition, which is a plus for some people. So, more is more, but not always better. 
But what this chart really shows us is a basis of comparison. Now that we know what kind of velocities we're going to get out of off-the-shelf target ammunition, how is that going to compare with something that's considered high-performance ammunition, like this Remington HTP ammo, that's high terminal performance? Now this is 45 ACP and it has a 230 grain projectile like these do, but instead of a full metal jacket round nose, it's a jacket at hollow point. And based on the title of it and the advertising and the cost of it, I can infer that this should give us significantly more velocity than this just off the shelf target ammo. So let's go back to the chronograph and put that to the test. So let's try our Remington HTP ammo. Eight hundred and fifteen. Eight hundred and thirty eight. Eight hundred and twenty. Eight hundred and twenty six. Eight hundred and twenty. 816. Now let's go crunch those numbers. Well I crunched the numbers and they were in a word disappointing. We got a mean velocity of 822 feet per second. Now the variation from lowest to highest velocity round was only 23 feet per second so that's good for consistency but 822 feet per second was very disappointing. The numbers were in fact so low and so far outside the scope of what I expected that off camera I redid the test and came up with numbers that varied by a factor of one quarter of one percent. So 822 is a good number, well at least a reliable number. And that's velocity that's less than our off-the-shelf target ammo. I've heard people refer to Winchester White Box as the Pabst Blue Ribbon of ammunition, and it's still outperforming our high terminal performance ammunition. And what this really does is brings up a concern over expansion threshold. Now, as I've said so many times before, hollow point bullets are velocity based. The faster you propel them, the more expansion you'll get up to a point. If you propel a hollow point bullet too slowly, it drops below expansion threshold, gives you very little to no expansion, thus no advantage over just full metal jacket ammunition. And the question is, well, what velocity is expansion threshold? And that will vary depending on a few factors, including the design of your hollow point bullet. But in a lot of the bullets I've tested, expansion threshold is usually 800 and change feet per second. I'm concerned if this stuff even comes up to expansion threshold. So let's see if we can put that to the test. We have our favorite target, soda jugs. And things like soda bottles, water jugs, make an excellent medium for hollow point expansion. And of course, it's backed up by the high-tech fleece bullet stop. And I'll shoot from seven yards, and we'll see what kind of expansion we get with our HTP ammunition. And now let's try a second shot. Here's the two projectiles I recovered. Both lost their jacket. One was just laying on the table and the other one was stuck in one of the soda jugs. And the lead portion of the projectiles were both stopped by the first layer of fleece. So we can see that although the velocity of this ammunition was disappointing, the expansion is excellent. So we see that our HTP ammunition looks very effective at a distance of seven yards. But the reason I'm shooting seven yards is because the FBI spent decades telling us that seven yards was a mean distance for a lethal confrontation. Although today I hear people tell a different version of that and you will hear people say that the statistic is that in citizen involved shootings over 90% of them occur at seven yards or less. But that presupposes that you're defending yourself against a bipedal criminal that's trying to do something harmful to you. What about when you're trying to defend yourself against a dangerous quadruped? Does that seven yard rule still apply? I've never seen a study on the subject and because accurate statistics are so difficult to get, such a study would be dubious anyway. But anecdotally, I can tell you that in reading American Rifleman magazine, in that section, The Armed Citizen, where they have very short articles about people who used a gun to defend themselves, one of them that I read was someone who used his hunting rifle to shoot two Dobermans that were chewing somebody up. And although the article does not mention a distance, I'm inferring that that happened at a distance of 20, 30, maybe 40 yards. In another case, something I saw on one of the nature channels on TV, some people were big game hunting in Africa, and someone was charged by a lion. And he shot the charging lion, and although it's 
inertia carried it to where it actually went past him. It's hard to tell from the video, but it looks like he shot it at a distance of 10, 15, maybe 20 yards. In another case, something I saw on the Discovery Channel, there was a man sitting on his front porch watching, I believe it was his grandson, swimming in the lake. And as he's watching the kid, he realizes the kid is swimming and being followed by an alligator. Well, he grabs his rifle, shoots at the alligator, and drives it off. But that took place at a distance of 50, maybe 75 yards. So although we know that in some animal attacks, the distance you fire may be point blank, it would appear that quite a few of them take place at distances greater than the seven yard textbook number. Now where that applies here is that 45 ACP ammunition in the relatively low velocity configuration that we're using, as that round goes down range, it's going to lose velocity and at some point drop below expansion threshold. Doesn't seem to matter too much at our textbook seven yard distance, but in the field dealing with quadrupeds, the distance you need to fire might be quite a bit more. With that in mind, let's do this soda jug drill again at a distance of 40 yards with our HTP ammunition and see what happens. We fired three shots and here's our three projectiles. Now the first one we see very poor hollow point expansion. That hit the soda jugs but very low and this reflects poor shot placement more than it does poor projectile performance. One of our other shots retained its jacket, one of them did not. But with both we see excellent hollow point expansion. So although I was initially disappointed at that HTP ammunition's fairly low velocity, it would appear that at the terminus of the bullet's travel it does deliver some pretty good performance. You might call it high terminal performance. So we see for our Remington HTP 230 grain jacketed hollow points, staying above expansion threshold at longer distances is not a problem, but it certainly is a problem for some forms of 45 ACP ammunition. So how do you combat that? Well, there's many things you can do, such as getting a pistol with a longer barrel, but the two things that will be most common that people will do is one, switch to plus P ammunition, and two, switched ammunition with a lighter projectile. Now plus P has its pluses, but it's got some downsides as well, such as not all handguns are rated to use plus P ammunition. Also, not all plus P ammo is created equal. There's been times where I've used a certain configuration of 45 ACP ammunition, switched to something that is identical in brand and configuration, except it's the plus P version, and only increased my velocity by about 30 feet per second. And that is more, but not that much more. Now in switching to a lighter projectile, 45 ACP ammunition is available in a wide variety of projectile weights, but what are by far the most common are the 230s we've been using so far and 185 grain projectiles. And as where the 230s we see give you velocities usually 800 and change feet per second, it's very common that 185 grain projectiles will give you a velocity of 1,000 feet per second or more. Now that is a lot more. That much greater muzzle velocity will mean less drop at distance, so less margin of error in trying to hit the target, and more muzzle velocity will mean more velocity at distance, therefore a much greater chance of staying above expansion threshold. However, the higher velocity, meaning greater hollow point expansion, in conjunction with a much lighter projectile, can cost you in terms of penetration. Now, when ammunition companies manufacture 45 ACP ammunition with 185 grain hollow point projectiles, they do so most of the time with the mindset that the intended target is going to be a hominid. How will that ammunition fare when trying to shoot a thick-skinned, heavily built quadruped? That brings us to what I call the magnum meat target. And what we're trying to simulate is a heavily built quadruped that we're shooting from the side. So as we're, we normally have leather jacket skin, in this case we've got two layers of leather jacket. Instead of pork ribs, we have much more robust beef ribs, two watermelons to simulate both lungs, more beef ribs on the back, and the whole thing followed by the new and improved high-tech fleece bullet stop. Now the ammunition I'm going to shoot this with is Winchester Silver Tip 45 ACP 185 grain jacket at hollow point. The reason being that when people talk about hollow point ammunition that delivers insufficient penetration, Winchester silver tip is on the top of a lot of people's list. So I'll go back 15 yards and I'll shoot our magnum meat target with our Winchester silver tip and let's see how it fares.
I fired four shots, all four hit the ribs on the front of the target, and where bullets hit the ribs, shattered them. Now our Winchester silver tip hollow points delivered tremendous expansion and a lot of fragmentation, and you can see that the damage to our first watermelon lung is extensive. But the damage to our second watermelon lung is almost non-existent. What little damage you see is from where I was trying to dig the bullets out. Because they had lost so much velocity after going through the first lung, they didn't have much left for the second one. In fact, none of the projectiles actually penetrated through the second lung, making it to the ribs on the back of the target. So it would appear that our Winchester silver tip 185 grain hollow points, being more or less representative of 185 grain hollow points, that they will deliver a lot of performance and do a lot of damage to their intended target, but when you switch targets to a more heavily built quadruped, it looks like they might leave you a little bit short. So let's put together a new meat target and shoot it with 230 grain projectiles and see if we do any better. And now we'll shoot from 15 yards with our Remington HTP 230 grain jacket at hollow point. Again, I fired four shots. All four went through the ribs on the front of the target where the bullets hit the ribs, broke them. And we see a lot of damage to our initial watermelon lung, but again, we see far less damage to our second one, although this one has significantly more damage than the previous meat target. And in this case, all four of the projectiles went completely through the second watermelon and into the ribs on the back of the target. A couple of them were stuck in the ribs and one managed to go completely through and was stopped by the first layer of fleece. Now, an interesting thing here is that although these 230 grain HTP hollow points showed really good expansion when shooting the soda jugs, even at 40 yards, their performance was not so impressive shooting the meat target. Let me show you a close-up of what they look like. And here's our projectiles that went through the meat target, and you can see there is some expansion, and the deformation is there, but not nearly to the extent we saw in the soda jugs. So far, it looks like the 45 ammo we're using, although it's doing a lot of initial damage, is not giving us the penetration we really wanted on a target like this. So are there any configurations that will? Well, a viewer sent me something called atomic ammunition. And he sent me a couple of different configurations, one of which is a 45 ACP with a non-jacketed, hard-cast lead, semi-wad cutter projectile. Let me show you a close-up of what it looks like. On your left is a typical full metal jacket round nose, and on your right is the semi-wad cutter. The idea behind the semi-wad cutter is to cut a nice clean hole in a paper target for more efficient scoring. But there are a lot of people of the opinion that with its flat nose and sharp shouldered design, it can do a lot of damage in a hunting application. And it's not velocity based like a hollow point. So there are people who are proponents of the idea that for relatively low velocity handguns like standard pressure 38 special rounds or some of your lower pressure 45 Colt or 45 ACP, that a semi-wad cutter design can be really effective. But are we going to get the desired effect on our magnum meat target? Now, let's go back 15 yards, shoot the meat target, and find out. I fired four shots, all four hit the ribs on the front of the target, where the bullets hit the ribs, broke them although there does seem to be less damage to the ribs on the front of the target than we got with the hollow points. Did a lot of damage to our initial watermelon lung, but again, it seems like a little less than the hollow points did. As far as our second watermelon, that's questionable whether or not the damage is any more or less. But in terms of penetration, only two of the bullets actually hit the ribs on the back of the target, both of which penetrated completely and went several layers into the fleece bullet stop. So we see there is definitely more penetration, although it may come at the cost of some effectiveness. But there's also the question of how will the semi-wad cutters compare to just plain old full metal jacket round nose? And let's put together one more meat target and see if we can answer that. So now we'll shoot from 15 yards with our Winchester white box 230 grain full metal jacket round nose and see what kind of results we get with this. Well, the bullets hit the ribs on the front of the target, and where they hit the ribs shattered them. 
We see a lot of damage to our first watermelon. As much as with the hollow points, probably not, but a lot of damage. Extensive damage to our second watermelon. And as far as the ribs on the back of the target, two of the projectiles were stopped by the ribs and two of the projectiles went through several layers into the fleece. But what's really interesting is what these projectiles look like now. Let me show you a close-up of them. Here's our four full metal jacket projectiles. We can see one has very little deformation. Two are flattened quite a bit and one is deformed a great deal. You could arguably say that we got as much deformation and expansion out of these full metal jackets as we did out of the hollow points. A couple of things I want to add because the question seems to come up frequently. This is an earplug case and yes I wear earplugs with every shot I take. Also yes I am in possession of iPro. And although I don't consider it necessary when shooting paper targets or using the chronograph, I typically do wear glasses when shooting things like the soda jugs or the meat target. I also typically take the glasses off before I get back on camera. So just because you don't see me wearing them does not necessarily mean I'm not using them. And I want to add that today's presentation went on quite a bit longer than I wanted it to, so for everyone who stayed till the end, thank you for your patience. And in the interest of brevity, I couldn't shoot every type of 45 ammo on the market. But what did we learn from what ammo we did shoot? Well, we see once again that not all 45 ammo is created equal. But as far as our bottom line of, is a 45 ACP sufficient for cougar or bear defense? And if so, what are some good ammunition choices? I would say that no one can decide what's right for you except you. But based on today's results, I would suggest that if you have other options like 357 Magnum, 44 Magnum, 454 Casul, you may want to exercise those options. But if a 45 is what you have, I'm going to go with it will be sufficient with the correct ammunition choice. Now, what is the correct ammunition choice? The only thing I can say there is you have to do your homework. And if you decide to go with plus P ammunition, you have to make sure that your firearm is rated for plus P. And you have to make sure that whatever plus P you select really is giving you a plus. Now, some things we learned from the ammunition we shot today, as far as the lead semi wad cutters, if you can find them and if you're firearm will function correctly with them, they might be a good choice. I would say generally speaking you might want to avoid the really light projectiles like the 185 grain hollow points. But the bottom line seems to be that at least for today's application, in 45 ACP ammunition, hardball is hard to beat. So as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional, and thanks for watching the 45 ACP for Cougar and Bear Defense video.